Um, as a female and with um, Archibald being the first female chief, I have to question whether or not this would have happened if, to someone like Perry Belgar. Would, would the executive take this um, stronghold and have her have him suspended? And it um, sadly, it really reeked of um, patriarchy, um, a lack of respect, just from a female perspective and um, just from the fact that she is the first female chief and she's had to face this controversy within the first year of her um, her serving. And so I was, uh, I haven't been following a, um, AFN very, very much. I've been focused on um, regional coverage, but when this blew up, um, I'm on social media a lot. I read a lot of the comments and a lot of the anger coming from um, a lot of women, a lot of young men who were feeling like this was just a stronghold and they were silencing her. And I could understand that that sense of um, a attack on, on women. Um, this came right after the Roe versus Wade um, decision in the South. And so there was this already this feeling of, um, of, um, a attack on females, attack on women. And so this came right after that. And I think everybody has been wrapped up in that. I know it's south of the border, but often what happens there trickles over here and um, that um, they call it the medicine line. We are so connected with people on the other side of the border that this, this verdict also affects a lot of our family who are on the other side of the border. And so for me, it was just, it all came at once and it just felt like it was, it was unfair and it was just not um, something that made me proud. Paul, you're on the ground at the AGA. Uh, what's the sense you've been getting out there from chiefs in assembly and others in attendance? Uh there is definitely an element of, of what Carrie's talking about. Um, when I spoke to the national chief yesterday, uh, it's clearly um, something she feels and is not shy about talking about. Uh, what I'm getting now, and this is uh, unscientific, small sample size, but it seems to me there's a, there's a split according to age, the younger chiefs are are supporting um, National Chief Archibald. The older chiefs are resisting her attempts to change the dynamic. Uh, now again, it might be people who have been around forever are the people who maybe are on that list of questionable contracts and they really don't want all that information to come out and they certainly don't want accountability if it should ever come to that although that's been watered down significantly from day one of this thing to the point now where there's been several versions of a resolution that we're expecting the chiefs to debate and the latest version um, uh, really uh, dulls the edge of any attempt at major reform. Uh, it certainly does uh, seem much change from the original version. Uh, Nigon, you know, the national chief and, and others are are pushing for this internal and inve external investigation of the finances of the AFN. Do you think that should be a priority? Well, just to talk a little bit about what Carrie and Paul were talking about, I mean, certainly patriarchy is an issue, the treatment of women is an issue, but I also think that what needs to be considered is the fact that many of the regional chiefs have very deep ties with the Liberal Party, and uh, as we saw with under National Chief Perry Bellegarde, when you have a closeness to the federal governing party, in this case the Liberals, uh, money flows very quickly into the organization, and that money has gone somewhere, and if the National Chief has said that the forensic audit is needed, then certainly it needs to be addressed. If the very leader of the organization is receiving resistance from those within the organization who have sought or perhaps are overseeing the contracts which have gone out. Uh, certainly there are a lot of smoke and if there is smoke one wonders if there's a fire. 
the question is really where does the AFN go from here? The structural changes that are necessary are evident. Uh, the fact that the national chief, the democratically elected national chief, voted by over 633 different chiefs in different ways, and, and whether you believe in democracy or not, that is the result of that election. Uh, the, the regional chiefs who don't really represent anyone other than their regional bodies, voted in by a few handfuls of chiefs. Um, can simply remove unjustly a national chief. That's a real problem in the organization, and it suggests that there are systemic problems that are going to continue to plague this situation, plague this organization, and will, as was rightly criticized uh, on day two of the AGA by the Youth Council, uh, be involved in their own squabbles while youth are dying, while people are facing boiled water advisories. And if the AFN is to do what it's supposed to do, which is to advocate for First Nations member First Nations chiefs and their issues within those First Nations, uh, it simply has not done so at this meeting, it really hasn't spent a whole bunch of time. And when the suspension vote was done, all of the chiefs tended to leave, or the majority anyways of chiefs tended to leave. And, and that's a real sign that there is more fights yet to come, but then also structural changes that have to happen for the AFN to be relevant, because if they don't change, then more and more chiefs will simply just turn away, and I think the younger ones will sooner rather than later. Yes, there was uh, very uh, moving speeches from the Youth uh, Council yesterday. If you haven't seen those, check out our website. Uh, Kerry, you mentioned you know you haven't been paying much attention to the AFN, and, and with all this talk of reform, uh, has the organization reached the end of its relevancy? I think for a number of years there has been a growing number of people who really question whether or not AFN is representing the average person, the average individual, um, someone like me, um, who lives in an urban setting. And so it's there's a lot of disconnect between AFN and Indigenous people living in urban settings. There is really um, a lack of um, of connection. And, and I see it growing. There's a lot of, I was out on um, Cody First Nation. Um, yesterday and speaking with the chief obviously he wasn't at the AF at the assembly and I know a, a number of chiefs who didn't bother attending the the assembly they said they send proxies mm -hmm. and that's a real concern about whether or not AFN is really meeting the needs not only of individual people but of of the people they're representing the the individual chiefs in um, each province and so it, it raises a lot of concern whether or not this is even, maybe it's time for change. Paul, this was uh, something we were hearing from speakers on the floor yesterday, feeling like, you know, they spent a lot of money to come out to Vancouver to this thing and not much was being accomplished. They, they felt like it was almost a waste of time. Do you, what are you hearing from people there about where the AFN goes? Uh. It's interesting. We were sitting on the riser at the back of the room uh, that's reserved for the media. Uh, uh, I was sitting with Jorge Barrera, former APTNer who's now at CBC, and the, between the two of us, we've been covering the AFN for a long time. And I had three separate elders um, come up to me and, and sort of joke about how there's considering how the expectations were raised coming into this, that there may be some uh, correcting uh, of some of the major faults in the organization, it, it's turned into, a, it sort of reminds me of the old Monty Python sketch where you had them, uh, the narrator go and suddenly, da, 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 nothing happened, because nothing's been happening really for day two and day three. Negan, uh, very briefly here, uh, if you want to react to that, but also that you know you've written about the disrespect and pettiness that was shown to the national chief by the regional chiefs. So, uh, what, if any, fallout do you see for the regional chiefs who had voted to suspend the national chief? Uh, none. I don't see any punishment or any sort of consequence happening for the regional chiefs. Uh, the AFN really has a problem. Uh, when there's a singer, singular issue, like for instance during the 1985, 80, 1980s constitutional debates, 
even during the time of the Royal uh, Commission on Aboriginal Peoples or during the struggles for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, when the AFN has a single issue to bring chiefs together to rally for and particularly to advocate against the federal government on a policy, uh, the AFN tends to become more unified. Uh, think of the days, for example, even of Stephen Harper and how the AFN at that time was quite unified, um, even though it had a situation involving National Chief Atlio of sort of being called out for not being able to bring Stephen Harper to the table. Um, when it, recently, when uh, Perry Belgard is on board with the uh, with the Justin Trudeau, it tends to be uh, an AFN that tends to work a bit more. Uh, fluidly. At the moment, you have a national chief who's battling with the regional chiefs on what are power control issues because the regional chiefs want to bring uh, program dollars, delivery services. That's me talking in a glass half uh, full way of seeing that the regional chiefs are trying to advocate for the organization to go regionally, whereas the national chief is trying to make a much more bigger structural issue within the organization. So that's going to be a tension. Um, and so I think the regional chiefs are going to probably go back to their provincial organizations. They're probably going to get maybe admonished a bit for their behavior for this gathering, for not having done much work or hel held up much work. But at the same time, people are going to look at the national chief and say, how is she being able to bring the regions on her side moving forward into the future? And I think there's a real critical juncture here. The next year of uh, National Chief Roseanne Archibald's reign as national chief is really going to be a telling sign of whether there's going to be more fights or whether the AFN is going to continue to try to struggle between a national vision and regional visions. Indeed. Uh, sadly, uh, we have uh, run out of time here. wish we could go for like an hour here. But uh, uh, Nigon, Kerry, Paul, appreciate you all taking some time to uh, speak about this with us. Yeah, miigwech. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dennis.